Today we have red cedar. This comes to us from Dan Presley in Georgia. Dan shipped this all the way across the country along with a whole lot of other pieces of wood, some of which are quite intriguing, some of which are quite puzzling. Today we're going to make an, an emerging vase and I'm intimidated by it. Let's take a look at it. The piece is about eight inches tall, about seven inches across at the widest point about three and a quarter inches at the top there. I'm intimidated because it's a spindle turning and spindle turnings depend on the turner to develop some sort of pleasing shape. Whereas with the natural bowls that I like to turn, the shape is predetermined for me in most cases. The outside maybe is gonna be left untouched or or the rim is perfect the way it is. So I just don't have to think much with a bowl. With a piece like this, I have, it, the design is up to me. And I'm not a designer. I'm a wood turner. And I just, I just don't know. It's just intimidating. I know precisely what I want to do. I don't know how to make it happen. So we're going to fumble our way through this. I'm going to do my very best to take best advantage of this beautiful red cedar. And I think we're going to see quite a bit of that heartwood in the vase portion. Basically, I'm going to turn a vase from the top down to about here. Maybe we'll end up going a little further in, into this cutoff branch section here. I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. I just hope we can get there from here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop, howdy. Let's get to it. So I've just drilled a 5 16 inch hole for my woodworm screw and we'll just get this mounted up here. I'm going to use tailstock support but I like to use the woodworm screw. It frees up the tailstock end when I want to work without tailstock support, which won't be much. Before I even make contact with the live center, I just want to mark out for a tenon. I want to make sure I have room to make a tenon. And I do, barely. Now before I got started, I uh, trimmed off the top about less than a quarter of an inch just to make sure that it was parallel with the bottom and I believe that's the case. I didn't want to have to do any turning on the bottom if I didn't have to. So this should tell me, yeah I think I got it real good. So all I need to do is turn a tenon on there and the rest of it's good. So I'm sure we can't turn very fast. I'm sure it's going to be quite out of balance. But we don't need to turn fast for a tenon anyway. About 410 RPM. I'm going to sharpen up my half inch bowl gouge and we'll get at it. Well a couple changes. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge instead of a half inch. When you use a gouge on end grain like this it tends to want to skate. Meaning as soon as it, as soon as it touches the wood it's going to go this way. And I hate when that happens. <laughs> you, have to, you have to be able to get the point, the sharpest part in there and I can't really so this is for the first time in my life I'm gonna create a shoulder with my parting tool right over here just outside of that circle and that'll give me something for my uh, gouge to rest against and it shouldn't skate I've never done it before I've seen other people do it Okay, that should work. Well, now I don't even have much reason to do any turning. Except I gotta go deeper than that. Gee, see I told you, I told you. This isn't my thing, I don't know how to do this. I'm gonna go deeper than that. I might not even, I might not even use the gouge. See how close I am to that outside edge. Yeah, I'm good. We got a pretty decent crack right here. Goes all the way up, but I don't think it goes very deep. But it does come all the way through that. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go a little deeper than that. I 
think that's going to work. I don't even have to square up the sides like I usually do because I just did it. And I think that's wide enough for my jaws to fit into. I'm wondering if I should start doing any turning now or just do it all once I turn it around. I think I'll just turn it around. Okay, well, let's do that. We've got the heater running. That's because it's 35 degrees out here. Well, I'm just, I'm just having lots of false starts here. I'm not ready to turn this around. I need to sand the bottom. Although, like I said, it is super smooth. I'm not sure what Dan used to cut that with, but it must have been a fine tooth blade, I can tell you. So, any, But I am going to sand it. But I also want to put some CA in this crack. And speaking of CA, a lot of people don't know what CA is. You know, they, they watch wood turners. They're not a wood turner. I get asked many times what what's CA well this is CA uh, there's different brands of course I use stick fast CA thin CA stands for cyanoacrylate which is the main ingredient in super glue and that's what this is a super glue so I'm just going to this crack runs all the way along here so I'm just going to apply CA in that crack in an attempt to keep it from spreading. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set up for 10 minutes or so and then I'll start sanding on the bottom. And 10 minutes, I know it's super glue and it's supposed to set fast and it does set fast, but when you use that much of it, it takes longer. Well, when it sets fast is when you use like one little drop to put two things together, then it sets almost instantly. In this case, there's a lot of super glue in there and it just takes a while to dry. Some people use accelerant, including me. I use accelerant once in a while, but for something like this, there's just no reason to. Just We'll, we'll just let it dry naturally. It'll be stronger that way. Accelerant kind of takes away a little bit of the strength of the glue. It does get it down quick. If, there, if I was just gluing down little pieces of bark or something, I'd use accelerant, but since this is structural, I want, I want to give it all the time it needs to dry. So I'll be back in about 10 minutes and we'll sand the bottom. Okay, I think it's dry now. I'm going to start at 180 grit with my 2 inch disc. Then I'm going to do 240, 320, and 400. I'm going to have the lathe spinning forward at about 350. I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Oh yeah, people also ask, what kind of mask do you wear, Phil? Well, it's just a, a disposable mask, 3M disposable mask like that. That's all there is to it, no, no big deal. So like I said, through the grits up to 400. I'll bring you back here in a bit and I'm trying to decide if we're gonna put the finish on now or later, I don't know, we'll find out. We got the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. Now it's been three days since uh, since I left it like this, it's just been cold. It's just been so cold I couldn't be out here. So now I've kind of forgotten <laughs> the design that I had in mind, I hope I can figure it out. What I do remember is that after I set this up and got to looking at it on that day, three days ago, I must have been looking at this side before and not paying too much attention to this side. But this is this is pretty much in my way. I can't I can't get much of a vase in, in this short area. So I'm gonna turn a lot of this away. I'd like to leave this bumped out here down near the bottom at least but I'm gonna turn much of this away at least round it over I, I don't know I won't know until I get into it and I also don't know how fast we're gonna be turning I've forgotten that part too let's see I did recheck my chuck make sure it was still tight after all that time and it is uh, we'll try about 530 rpm 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on Okay, that's real rough, but I'm gonna go with that for a little bit. I should, I should have room enough now to do whatever it is I'm trying to do. So I think I'm gonna start up here at the top.
I'm looking, I've, I've got cracks. It's a real thin one right here. Pretty thin here. And then this is the one that I filled earlier. And it's not so thin. So I think I'm going to put CA in those cracks. Give it a few minutes to dry. We'll get back at it. There's some of that beautiful heartwood starting to pop out at us, huh? Let's hope that crack hangs in there with us. I got quite a bit of CA down in there. It took a long time to dry and then it still spit it out all over. I'm wondering if now that I'm getting this down to size if uh, this isn't too big. Maybe not. Maybe it is. I don't know. ugly. Yeah, okay, we're we're getting there. I'm going to abandon that for a minute and come over here and see what I can do about this part. Well, I wish I could pick up some speed, but I just can't. This is so bumpy, just hitting in one spot, it's just uh, darn near impossible to get a clean cut. I'm going to try my scraper on that, and I might end up back at the gouge with it, I don't know. better amazingly yeah I can just about live with that almost yeah that's pretty good I think I'm gonna switch to a smaller tool rest I think I oh I put some more CA in that crack I think I want to work on this a little bit more, this end of this projection here. I don't want to take it away, but I want to reduce it somehow. I'm going to work here for a bit, and here for a bit, and then we'll go back to the vase. The vase is not quite the shape that I want yet. It's, it's getting there. Still turning well. Actually, I think I picked the speed up. Six, 625. good about that well but I guess I should pretty good now I got a little bump here now that's 
That's pretty good. It's not great, but it's, it's okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. Back to the vase. Well, I guess that's pretty much what I had in mind. What do you think? Does that look like an emerging vase to you? You think this is too thick? Taper that down anymore? It's okay? All right. I guess we'll go with that. So, oh, I was going to say time for sanding, but I guess it's time for drilling. Got to make a hole in our vase. What good would it be without a hole in it? I'm going to start at 9 16 and see what that looks like. Could be bigger, I guess. Or I could just open the mouth up a little bit more with a chisel. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I like that better. Okay. Now, time for sanding. Okay, sanding. I'm going to start with my Sandoflex. This is 120 grit, and then I'll do 180 grit, and that's as fine as I'll go. And I'm going to use that just on the bark, and, and where there is no bark also. And I'm using 120 because the bark is kind of flaky, and I want to get off all the flaky flaky parts that want to come off. I want them off now before I put the finish on. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my two inch disc starting at 80 grit and I'll sand all of the turned parts. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. And that will clean it up and smooth it out, but it won't change how it looks too much. Although it might lighten it just a little bit. And then with the piece spinning in reverse at about 350. And I'll probably probably be doing some of this as well. Yeah, that does a better job actually. I guess that's what I'll be doing mostly. So I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Whenever I do one of these emerging type pieces, I always have to ask myself, do I want to put finish on the bark, on the on the unturned parts or do I want to just leave it natural and I remember one that I did put it on and I wished I hadn't but then but then there's been others where I was really glad I did so it's, it's just a puzzle I just don't know which way to go with it now this only has bark just really right here is all there's no bark on this side it's uh, 
you know, it's, it's not turned. It has evidence that there was bark. So, am I going to or am I not? I know, I hear you, I hear you. Half of you are yelling, don't put it any on there, and the other half's yelling, yeah, put it on there. It's going to make quite a bit of difference where the bark is. In my opinion, it's going to look really good with finish on the bark. Well, I'm putting it on there. And I like it, as it turns out. It really brings out the color of the bark. And it's a real nice contrast with the rest of it. I'm not sure how well you can see it. I think you can see it pretty well. Yeah. Okay, this is sanding sealer, shellac-based sanding sealer. I'll put on two coats of this, two coats of shellac, and then I'll be stuck for how I'm going to get that tenon off of there. How am I going to drive this thing? There's more than one way to do it, but I don't know what those what those ways are exactly. Boy, am I tired. It's 6.30, 37 degrees, and i got to make spaghetti. So I'm going to work alone so I can hurry. I'll uh, see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Well, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I've mounted a chuck up in my chuck, a drill chuck in my lathe chuck. Inside of that, I have a half inch dowel. Nothing on it, just a dowel. That comes up in into the bottom of the vase. Got my tailstock in place. Uh, I spun it up. Seems to work, but then the problem is, if I wiggle this and the vase is wiggling, the dowel and the other chuck are not wiggling. So either it's slipping around inside the bottom of this or that dowel is flexing and it's gonna break, I don't, I don't know. But it's what I've got for right now. We're gonna be turning at 550 RPM. We're removing the tenon. I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Now I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer. I don't think there's much I can do with my tool rest. This thing's, this wing sticking out here. It's kind of keeping me from doing what I want to do. I may not cut this off all the way through. I, I don't know. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM. And just keep working it away. Piece of it just broke off, see that? Oh yeah, and besides that it's end grain. <laughs> I am gonna just take this over here to the workbench. I'm just gonna hold the whole thing in one hand and use a a chisel to cut that off. It's going to come off real easy. I guess I can just do it right here. Then I'll just sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One red cedar emerging vase in the books, and I'm really proud of it. It's just exactly what I had in mind, which is <laughs> so rare for me with a spindle turning. It just doesn't happen that often. I'm not sure what's the front here. To me, kind of like that is the front, but it looks good from all sides. What do you think? See, what I like about this, and I think it's supposed to be with each emerging 
turning, whatever it happens to be, a ball or a vase or a whatever, is you have to imagine what's, what would have been if, uh, if more of this would have been turned away, if all of this would have been turned away and just, just a vase would have emerged. So what's down in here? Is there a, does this just taper down longer and longer and longer until it's just real tiny at the bottom? Or does it have a, a flat spot on the bottom, kind of like a wine glass? You don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what it might have been if it wasn't emerging out of this branch. But it's pretty cool, don't you think? I, I, it's, my best, it's my best turning as a spindle turning ever. Okay, there it is. Oh yeah, on the bottom. I didn't sign it. I guess I will. I didn't. It's not going anywhere. Actually, my daughter already claimed it, but I'm keeping it around a while so that I can appreciate it. It's just beautiful wood, huh? That mix of heartwood and sapwood really makes it. A little bit of bark on there. I do wish it had bark all the way around, but it just doesn't. Thank you, Dan Presley, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.